Thank you. All right, it's three after the hour. We'll uh, finish up the attendees list later. Let's jump right into it. I'm sorry, who's that? I thought I heard someone speaking there. Okay. Um, all right, let's go through the uh, AI, see if there's anything that jumps out. Is there anybody who would want to mention their AI status that's worthy of note? I think most people know about their AIs. They just need to find time to do it. I know, Kathy, you're working on your PR, so I know that's in the works. Yeah, I don't think anything's worthy. Anything, anybody kind of want to talk about their AIs at all? Okay, moving forward then. Um, doo -doo -doo. So possible face-to-face -face at Shanghai. Um, we are, we may do a meeting. It will not be an official meeting because I don't believe we have quorum based upon the Duda poll. I guess that actually closes today. Um, I guess I just double check, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I know there were no new votes. Um, actually, I'm sorry, this is probably wrong. This probably should have said uh, Seattle. Anyway, I, 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 I'm sorry about that confusion. I, I, it's been a busy week for me. I'll, I'll clean up that stuff, but I it's do believe there's a Duda poll out there. I'm sorry, go ahead, Scott. Sorry, uh, Seattle's in December and Shanghai's in November. Yeah, but I think I, I think I just messed up on this because I think we already decided we were not going to do a face-to-face -face meeting, an official face-to-face -face meeting at Shanghai because we didn't get quorum, but I did put a doodle pull out there for Seattle. And I think that one's still going. So um, I'll, I'll fix this. We have time for that doodle pull to finish up, so we don't need to worry about it. So I apologize for that little bit of confusion. Can you point me to the Seattle one because I think I only saw the Shanghai one. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that after the call. I, uh, I don't want to, or during the call, are there people talking? I'll try to find that. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, community time. This is a little time for people who don't normally join the call, who are just part of the community in general. If they'd like to bring up a topic for discussion, we usually spend 10 minutes or so if there's a topic. Is there anybody on the call who, maybe not as a regular, who has a topic they'd like to bring up? Yes, I do. Okay. Go My name's it. Josh, and I'm also from Chegg. All right. And what's your topic that you'd like to bring up? And um, we were recently, yeah, yeah we were recently looking at uh, the, the cloud event standard, um, but we have a couple of issues with it um, mm -hmm. regarding um, the camel case uh, field names and uh, also the required nature of the event ID field. Okay. Um, it sounds like those may actually be topics that might take more than say 10 minutes to discuss. Is this, or are these topics that you could open up issues for so we can get some offline discussions and, and possibly uh, deeper deeper uh, uh, investigation into what you're yeah, concerned about? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, how can I find where to open up those topics? Or should I just send an email to the group? Okay, uh, we'll do you obviously, that. Yeah, uh, um, you obviously could send email to the group, but usually the best way is to go to the GitHub repo. I think it's um, github.com slash cloud events slash spec and just open up an issue there with your concerns and then you can get some offline discussions going and see where we land. Okay, sounds good. Excellent, thank you. All right. Any other community related topics people want to bring up? Hi, uh, my name is Luciano. I'm from Itaú in Brazil. It's a bank. We are discussing uh, how to make an event uh, driven architecture. And uh, uh, last week we saw the, uh, the standard and uh, we didn't uh, see any correlation ID between events. I don't know if it's already discussed or it's a topic for discussion. So this has come up in previous discussions. Is there someone on the call who would like to address this and talk about the, the current status of it? Like, for, for example, maybe Kathy, since that was a, a hot topic for you? Yeah, okay, so, you, so the question is about correlation ID, right? Yes, to correlate uh, the different events that uh, it was started by the same, uh, the same common event. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, I think my, um, um, yeah, my PR will cover part of that. And then you can take a look at the workflow. Um, I will put the workflow uh, link in the um, meeting minutes. And you can take a look at that one, you know, to um, combine all those two together will help solve this problem. Um, 
can this is Rachel? Can I just ask what the problem is that you're like? What your use case is, so we can like, so we have a better sense of what you're trying to do. Uh, it's for me, Luciano. Uh, one example that we were discussing correlation ID. Uh, maybe I have a payroll of uh, thousands of employees that I have to pay. I start just one event to pay all the all the employees, but I have. Uh, thousands of events in the account of each one and uh, in the future I want to track that uh, all the the deposits was started by the same event that was the payroll event almost like a uh, almost okay. like a transaction ID kind of a thing that, that gets propagated across all the events as they're as new ones are generated based upon a, on a one original one so maybe um, I think you know maybe one way to how about we have, um, you know, if you can um, present your use case in next meeting, and then um, we can probably work on that. Or I can work with you on the use case, on the use case, and then uh, we can see how that solved, and then present it back to the team. Does that work? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll prepare something to to show you. Okay. That would be good. Actually, I, I'm thinking, you know, because this, for this correlation um, ID, I think, you know, different, I, I feel some people, um, it's still not clear about what are the use cases, what is the problems. Um, probably it's good, you know, in the next meeting, you know, we present some use cases. I can um, present some use cases, which people has put down in the workflow spec. Uh, I can go through those. Or, and then, you know, uh, I think Luciano, you can also present your use case. So people has a, a better understanding of, you know, what problems uh, we're trying to solve. And then, you know, we can um, start talking about the solution. Does, is that a better way? Yeah, I'd like the idea of gathering all the use cases that people want to address with this. I'm trying to figure out whether a Google Doc or one issue that people add comments to would be a better way to go. Um, you want to you want to decide, Kathy, which way you'd like to go with that, since I think this is a topic that that's very that that, that you care a lot about. Yeah, uh, I think you know. Um, so uh, so there's I'm going to put the link that um, workflow link in this uh, in the meeting minutes, and then people can in that workflow spec there are a section on, on use cases. People can go through those use cases. But I assume even you know even you go through the, that document those use case section you might still have some questions so I I think probably it's a and um, so and then you know I can probably present uh, give me some time next meeting I can quickly um, go through those use cases or if people have questions we can another way is you know people have questions uh, and then you know we can help answer the questions uh, because those use cases are not just just a, a lot of different people putting those use cases. So other people can also um, um, jump in to help answer questions. That's an, one way. Another way is I just present those use cases. So which yeah, way I, should we? Well, I think presenting the use cases would definitely be good, but I, I do think it would also be useful to allow a place for people to put their use cases down in, in advance of next week's phone call. And uh, I'm trying to figure out whether the, that'd be best done as a Google Doc or as an issue. I'm leaving a little more towards an issue. That way it's saved within our, re, our repository for we can, so we can go back and reference it later. So Kathy, what do you think about opening an issue just to gather people's use cases around um, correlation? And um, so the spec already has a place for people to put in the use cases. There are already, I think, at least five or six use cases there. So why don't we, uh, probably it's better just to put into that same place instead of we create another document for use cases. What do you think? Well, the, the use cases uh, document that we have is, I think, slightly different. I think that's a use case document for where we think cloud events will be used and how it, how it could solve those particular problems. I think what we're doing here, though, is we're more of an information gathering stage where we're trying to figure out which use cases we want to support. And so I think this, I think it needs to be a little bit more freeform. Okay. So okay. if you want, so, so, so why don't I open the issue and then people can add their, their use cases to that issue and then we can figure out which ones we want to support and then put those into the official use case document. Does that sound okay? 
Um, that's fine, but I think you know those UCC document in the workflow are already you know people are already putting a lot of effort putting that use cases and also it's discussed and agreed by you know that group of people which should be solved you know um, for relate to the cloud events. So I think that part should also be um, because that's already those use cases have been discussed and should be included. No, I totally agree. Another, yeah. another one, you know. Another, which, Another point is I'm not sure everyone is clear about uh, what needs to be in sort of the envelope, what we used to discuss, or what should be in the payload. Because for some of those use cases, the data could be in the payload, not necessarily in the envelope. Yeah, yeah I agree that I could use the payload for that, but uh, I, I think it could be a common, uh, common. Uh, a common field that uh, a lot of events will need is the reason that maybe it should be a standard field. Yeah, but that's not the, the role, but it's not the role of, of the envelope. So every time we have new people coming to the call, I think we're trying to clarify this again. Things that need to be outside of the payload of the message are things that are by things that observe the message, like things that deal with routing and. Yaren, is it possible for you to get closer to the microphone? Yeah, it's very uh, hard to hear. Sorry, it's, I'll, I'll try again. I'm saying every time new people come to the call, then we're trying to uh, explain again what's the difference between the envelope and the message. And I think it needs to cl be clarified that things that are in the, the envelope need to serve things that observe the message. We don't try to put common things in the envelope. I think that I think getting that clarity would be very, very good. I agree, Yaron. I, I agree with that. I also agree. I think it'd be useful even beyond sort of the workflow um, to have a repository of, of use cases where people can ask questions and people can respond to it. So I don't care whether it's an issue or Google Doc, but I think I think there's the use cases that we officially support and that we bring into the standard. But I think from a community perspective, I think it'd be very useful for people to be able to bring forth use cases that we can uh, pro provide sort of the expertise of the group for and provide perspective on. Right. Okay. So, so I'm not sure what you, uh, if you guys meant this or not, but since this is a topic that seems to confuse a lot of folks, uh, could I, could I ask uh, for like some kind of, um, I don't know, like a, is there any document anywhere that explains uh, this particular point? So I think we may have tried in the past. Um, I think the primer does try to touch on this. I don't think it does a, a good enough job though. But I think that's the attempt is that we'll use the primer to help explain uh, topics that don't necessarily go into the spec itself, but are help explain uh, the, how to use the spec and some of the decisions we made behind uh, uh, what the spec says. Um, but we are running a little low on time here and I don't want to rattle too much on this because obviously this is going to be a very important topic. So tell you what, why don't I take the action item to create an issue to gather people's thoughts, requirements, use cases, whatever you want to call it, around correlation and, and see where that discussion leads us as part of that issue. What I'll also do is create another issue to make sure that we, we touch on this topic of envelope versus uh, data or slash body, whatever you want to call it. Does that sound fair that we would get some discussion going there? Sounds there great. is an issue for uh, envelope versus uh, payload uh, data already. Oh, we do, and, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, there are not that many examples right now because the SDKs are still being worked on. As soon as the SDKs are in, I, I wouldn't say better state, but more ready, uh, people are gonna start building stuff, me included and more examples are gonna come out, but right now it's still a bit early due to the lack of uh, easy SDKs. Uh, Vlad, can you do a favor? Can you, um, can you get the URL to the issue or get the issue number and just stick it into the notes here just so we have that? Uh, it's in chat, but I'll put it in the Google Doc too. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I can't see the chat right now, but I appreciate that, thank you. Yeah, so Doc, I yes, think Scott. the... Uh, the gentleman who spoke before you, I think, raised a good point. I think, you know, we really need to um, uh, have a document that explain, 
well, well what is what are the issues? So people are, are on the same page. Otherwise, I think this topic is going to be dragged on, you know, a long time. So I I I can volunteer to 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 write up something on that. So to see whether you know people um, and then people can add you know more um, input or comments on that. Um, I really would like to help with this use case because we have income, we have such use cases to solve too. So I think, you know, um, it's better we bring everyone on the same page on the issues we try to solve. Okay, yeah, that sounds wonderful. Thank you, Kathy, for volunteering. But let me ask you a question just for clarity in my own mind. Are you talking about adding text that talks about correlation or are you talking about text that tries to clarify pay, uh, envelope versus payload? No, no, it's I'm not the envelope for the payload. That's a it's pretty easy. I'm talking about the about correlation that you know why we, so what why we need it. Uh, it's not okay. I, I think I'm not going to talk about the solution. I'm going to just talk about the problems. You know, basically we need to um, correlate um, multiple events. Um, so there are use service use cases that involves multiple events, and then there are issues there. Uh, we need to solve in order to support those use cases. So that's what I would like to talk about. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I gave you an action item to, to write us some text around that. Thank you very much for volunteering. Hi, this is, this is Jim. I have, a, I have a question, I'm not sure if it's a process question or just a group question. Um, mm -hmm. When we look at um, propagating other contexts around, so I, I was looking at, uh, for instance, open tracing, yeah, which seemed um, to be be something that we could propagate that context through the extensions uh, in the context. Um, where do you see those sort of specs or guides living? Would you see that as a, an open tracing best practice or as a cloud events best practice? Right. So I'm gonna to try to let someone else speak on this because I don't wanna dominate the call. So I'll, let me pick on someone like Clemens. Clemens, you want to take that one? Um, I have not paid attention in the, for the last 15 seconds. <laughs> but I did pay attention before that, I swear. So what was that? Okay, so, so when we look at something like open tracing, yeah, which has um, defined mechanisms for propagating uh, tracing contexts across either different transports, yeah, HTTP and messaging and whatever. Um, it would seem that you could map those similar constructs into the extensions in the context of, an, of a cloud event yeah. uh, and then unify that. So, so the question then becomes, is that uh, an open tracing uh, piece of work or is that a cloud events piece of work? So the way, the way I think about that is that it's effectively a... Um, so on which side of the fence that that lands, I'm not sure because it really depends, like with every project, in in who's who says who, who's quicker to to uh, to say yes or no. Um, but uh, it, so from a general approach, I would say yes. If you have open tracing and you need to have a particular metadata that has particular types and has particular names, and you want to make that you want to harmonize that across multiple transports, then the right way to do this is to define how you project that into various um, um, transports or envelopes um, as you would do this with, with any existing prior art. So for instance, if you, if you were slotting, if I may, if I may uh, use that old terminology for a second, if you were adding an open tracing metadata island to SOAP, what you would do is you would probably have some XML island, some XML that's defined in open trace, and you would basically slot that into a soap pattern um, as is. And and I looked at this here in a very similar way: is that you define an extension um, and put that into the extension catalog, um, probably external or here, uh, and that probably also depends on the character of the project and whether we would take that here into our repo. Uh, like if, it, if it's open, runs on the umbrella of its foundation, et cetera. Um, and then define it as an extension and you would use those things as is. So for correlation more broadly, because that's a correlation item, for correlation more broadly, 
if let's say there is the, and I'm just making one up right now, kind of the open home automation alliance, right? And they say we need to have a we need to have a standard for defining um, where um, devices hang in a home, and there's a notion of um, a room geometry, and there's a notion of a floor, and there's a notion of um, a, a unit, and there's a notion of a building per se, um, and there's all that's all correlation data. Then that would also probably go into an extension that then everybody who's you know, building systems that have to do with a home automation standard uses, um, but they're only applicable to that subset of, of consumers uh, and publishers, and they don't affect the standard per se. It's not like everybody who's using cloud events must be using then that home automation standard, but everybody who's using that home automation standard will use that extension um, to lay it on top of cloud events. That's how I look at it. So the same, so that open tracing, everything else, like all of those, various different um, um, of metadata extensions for, for all of those that see the same model. Done. So I, I oh. go ahead, sorry. Uh, just, just as an FYI, this doesn't need to be necessarily a hypothetical discussion. Um, so we wanted open tracing to work. Uh, we did some research. Uh, from what I could tell, it seems like open tracing over HTTP is based on distributed tracing and that's why there's a distributed tracing extension. Uh, my attitude was A, like the spec wasn't at 0 one yet, uh, and we are the smaller body, and the WC3 spec is stable. So there's, there was very little risk in just adding it to the documented extensions. Okay, and with that, I think we're going to have to call time because it's supposed to be bounded by 10 minutes. I think we've gone a little bit over. However, that's not to indicate that the topics that are brought up here aren't worthy of further discussion. Uh, what I would ask, though, is um, <clears throat> please don't hesitate to open up issues in our repo for some of these topics. That way we can get some offline discussions going and we don't have to limit ourselves to these 10-minute time slots for some of these things because some of these things are rather important that we get settled. Um, and I, I think trying to discuss those two issues would be the best way forward on those. So thank you guys very much, but we do need to kind of move forward. Um, so I don't think there's any update on the SDK or on the workflow work group. So let's go ahead and jump right into the PRs. Um, so on the extension PR that we've been discussing, I, the last time I checked, the last vote was like almost an hour or so ago. Let me just double check here, see if there's anything new. No, okay, Mark was the last one to vote. Okay, so uh, it's out of, hold on a minute, my Zoom will not get out of the way. Okay, so the vote finished, and last time I checked, it was 10 to one in favor of the PR. So the PR has been approved. And I will update a comment to the PR, or I'm sorry, I'll add a comment to the PR, giving the results of the vote status in there. But it has been, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Didn't uh, Kathy vote, vote against it? No, she changed her vote. She, okay. she, added, yeah, she, added, she added her comment, yep. I did go back through and make sure that that was the only one that was edited, unless I messed up. So thank you for, for bringing that up though. Yeah, I, I would like to clarify, I changed my vote. And then later, I think Doug will work, work with me together on, on putting a new PR to um, clarify those points, you to add those points, which means we allow property bags with its um, type clearly defined, but with its content uh, open for open. Right. <clears throat> I got it, thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right, so that one's behind us. Um, next one on the list, I'm hoping this is an easy one. Uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Austin, sorry. <laughs> he, have, he added a whole bunch of new logo artwork. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at that. It's been out there for, I guess, what, seven days now, a week. Um, Scott, is there anything you want us to do with this one little comment? I just, just pointed out, like, when I see that logo, I, I think of this symbol that's on almost every consumer electronic. They're advertising us. What can we say? <laughs> is this something other people are concerned about? I, to be honest, I don't think Clemens change to the logo is, is really significant in the sense that it's, it's always looked kind of the same. I think it just changed some spacing. Do you mean Austin? Think, I'm sorry, Austin. Jeez, what did I say? Yes, Austin. I don't think his change was huge. So I don't think any similarity or not to this CE that's on all electronic devices um, is, I is a new logo. Did we move away from the logo with a little cloud? 
No, here, let me see if I can show it on here. It's still a cloud, but I think we just added some spacing to, let me see if I can find one. I think we just added some spacing. See, you still got a little cloud here. I think you just added some extra spacing, like between the C and the E, I think. Oh, I, I see. It's not, like I said, it wasn't a huge change. It was just, it was just try, I think it's tried to make it a little bit, make the C and the E stand out a little more from each other, I think, if I remember correctly. No, and there's a, there's a break now between the cloud and the E tail. Ah, is that nice? Okay, I didn't realize that. So, I don't know, to me, they're relatively minor changes. Yeah, I don't know that the CE is, in the context of the cloud, it's not as, it doesn't mean, it doesn't read consume, consumer. Like yeah. Okay, so is there any objection then to adopting this PR and the new logos? All right, done. Oops. So I believe um, uh, Dan Barker is going to go ahead and make the changes to our website to pick up the new logos. I will start the process of <clears throat> uh, getting the stickers updated with the new logos. And then I do have a coupon code and I'll order some stickers. And I believe we should probably get them in time for KubeCon, either Shanghai or at least Seattle, I would assume. So I'll work on that in the background. All right, moving forward. Um, we have two PRs that were opened for additional transport bindings. If I remember correctly, there was a general sense on both of these that they may not have met the new bar relative to uh, acceptance of new transports and bindings. But people are, were given another week, in fact, it's now been two weeks, to look these over. Has anybody changed their opinion? Um, is there any reason for us to accept either of those? transport bindings. I want to point out that Sarah proposed a change to what our standard is. And so maybe we should hold off on these until we decide on that. Oh, when did she propose that? Did I miss it? When, when, when did that fly through? I missed it. So I submitted it um, early yesterday and there was like, um, or sometime yesterday. It was just kind of in response to the whole discussion on that thread. And um, I, we read the article, the, the qualifying topics, and I don't think it's being, it didn't feel like it was reflect, the wording was reflective of the conversation, right? We had this conversation uh, many weeks ago and we were like, it's hard to describe de facto. Yeah. And um, so now that we're looking at it through the lens of another test case, um, I, I was like, well, I'm not sure that de facto was, like needs to be as narrow as it's literally interpreted if you read that paragraph. Okay, I, I apologize, I, I missed your, was it a note or an issue that you opened up? I, I did a PR. Yeah. You did a PR, I did a PR, okay, I apologize then for missing it. I was traveling all day yesterday, so I missed that. So tell you what, I think, Rachel, I think you're right then. Why don't we hold off on this decision of these two since, the, since we're headed towards closing them, it does no harm to keep it open another week or so. So uh, we can look at your PR, um, Sarah, that you just opened up, and we'll discuss that next week to see if we want to uh, change something. Um, since I haven't looked at it, do you offer some alternative text as part of your PR? Yeah, it's a very minor change. Okay. So, uh, people can look at it, chime in, and we can discuss it next week. Okay, excellent, thank you. Okay, so we'll defer these two then until next week. Thank you. Um, next, Christoph, would you like to talk to this PR? Because I think it's pretty much ready to go. Um, yes. So, um, what I did is I looked, or the issue is that if you put too much stuff into extension, then into extensions, um, that we may run into technical stuff, like for example, the HTTP transport, we will put this in the headers and most HTTP servers will at some point uh, reject requests if the header data gets too large. So I actually did an issue where I described like for a couple of things like Nginx, for example, has a limit of eight kilobytes, like the eight of us it, the IA gateway has 10 kilobytes and so on. Uh, so yeah, so this is like sort of just guidance saying you shouldn't put too much extension, extensions into uh, your cloud event because if that happens to be transported, for example, over HTTP, uh, then you have so much header data that your uh, reject, uh, request will be rejected. And I think this doesn't only apply to HTTP, it will also apply to other uh, transport bindings 
um, but this is just used as an example. All right, and I think this came up on a previous phone call, and I think, Sarah, you might have offered some, some slight wording tweaks, which I believe are in there now. Yes, so, sir. Uh, yep. So what do people think about this? This is strictly for the primer, so it is non-normative text. Are there any concerns with this text going into the primer? Okay, let me make it official. Is there any objection then to adopting this PR? All right, excellent. Thank you very much, Christoph. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, on a previous call, it may have been two weeks ago, I'm not 100% sure, uh, when we were talking about a possible face-to-face -face meeting, actually, I, I think, actually, it might have been for the OSS Summit this week. Um, it was brought up, I think Clemens may have mentioned it, that we may have overlooked the fact that our governance doc doesn't talk about face-to-face -face meetings have to be announced uh, with a certain time period in advance uh, to give people a chance to get travel approval and set up travel plan and stuff like that. So I took the action item to create a PR to say that we have to do it at least four weeks in advance uh, to give people plenty of warning. Uh, so here's my PR to add that to the governance stock. Hopefully it's fairly straightforward. Just says meetings, face-to-face uh, -face -face meetings will be announced four weeks in advance. Are there any concerns with this? Any objection then to adopting it? All right, cool, thank you very much. All right, Kathy, we're onto your identity labels PR. So hold on a minute, let me bring it up. Would you like to talk about the current status of this one, Kathy? Okay, so um, this is a, 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 a attribute that with a with a, you know the uh, format of you know key value format, and the key will be a string and the value will be a string, and this is a place to that people that the event producer can put identity labels inside it, and then the event consumer can you know can use that for um, for example for correlation purpose. Like you know, for uh, uh, for I, I I present some use cases before, on um, like for a travel request uh, um, service application, and that lay that identity label could be uh, the travel request ID or the employee ID, and then you know the consumer can use that to correlate that event and uh, could correlate you know a travel request event with a travel approval event. And there are many such use cases, like uh, I present another use cases, which is a burglary detection system. There could be a motion, um, motion uh, detection event and the window open event. And then, you know, people can use the identity label um, of these two events to correlate them to the same uh, service application instance. So this is for that purpose. Um, I, let me see here. Um, yeah, basically, um, that's about it. Uh, I think this uh, correlation issue has been brought up um, multiple times in previous meetings. Um, in order to support those use cases, uh, I would like the cloud, I think we need the cloud events to have a place for the event producer to um, put in this information. And this is an optional field. If the uh, event producer doesn't have any uh, identity labels, then there's no need to have this field. And also, from the event consumer's point of view, if you know it doesn't need this information, it can just ignore the whole the, this bag. Doesn't need to go into um, this bag to decode every label. Yeah, that's that's about it. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Is there somebody who'd like to bring up a discussion point on this one? I'll just point out that it seems like there are some comments on the PR that. I'm not sure addressed. Yeah, no, I agree. I, uh, normally I wouldn't have actually put this one on the agenda, but I know it's a very hot topic and I don't think there's anything huge after this. That's why I kind of moved it to the end, but yes. Um, Kathy, do you want to talk about the, your responses now or should we wait to see it in the PR? Um, oh, so there are new, I think I, I didn't it just what I think I already replied. I think I'm saying there are not in the, okay top level okay i okay so this is a i think you know this is a very important um it's very important for the cloud events to have um to include this information 
um, at the top level uh, of the spec uh, because there are a lot of use cases that need this, you know, a lot of IoT use cases and even enterprise use cases. I, I think that there's a lot of use cases that you are going to use this for, but I don't think that there's that many use cases that the community at large will use. So consider what the population would do with this, not just what you would do with this. Okay, because like, you know, um, like in today's meeting, I see that, you know, the Lucino also bring up uh, use cases and uh, mm. in our workflow discussion, you know, there are people from other uh, company also bring up the use cases. Um, but yeah, just want to give some comments. Uh, I think there are some other uh, use cases. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. Uh, say uh, AWS, uh, uh, a user can upload the image into uh, S3 bucket. Uh, so let's say um, there are three buckets and uh, when a user uploaded uh, an image into one of the bucket, uh, one service function is triggered. So. Uh, the event source of this uh, event is uh, S3 bucket. The event, uh, event type is uh, object created and also each event has an event ID. So for most of the cases, uh, this information might possibly be good enough for the service function. But uh, for some other cases, the service function might need to know what, uh, who uploaded the image to bucket one or bucket two or bucket three and possibly need some other extra information about uh, you know, some sort of ad identification context of the event. So I think this is one possible, uh, possible use cases. I believe there are some other uh, use cases. Uh, I think this is one thing I want to comment. The other thing is that uh, this uh, attribute, uh, well, I, I think it doesn't matter you call this uh, attribute a bag or not. To me, um, this attribute is uh, defined to be a map of a map of key, key value pair. And the, the value of these, uh, uh, the value of the key is, uh, is also a string or is defined by Cassie. So it doesn't really matter it's a map attribute or a string attribute. Uh, we can also uh, make it a, a string attribute if we want by uh, making it a string of uh, a comma separated string, uh, comma separated key value pair. In that case, these, uh, you know, this uh, identity uh, attribute is just uh, uh, very similar to other attribute defined in, in this spec. Um, another thing I want to say is that uh, the identity uh, context for each event is very different from other events. So some event can have just a zero identity uh, context, but some others may have 10 or some others may have uh, more context. So the, the, the information related to the identification is quite different. So it's kind of dynamic. It's kind of hard to put uh, uh, such kind of information into the top level. So it's, I think it's, it's better, it's a good idea to put all uh, identity related information into the uh, into this attribute. So this is just my thought. I'm just new to this group. Maybe you know, uh, I'm catching up with you. So if anything wrong, please correct me. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We have some people raising their hands. Uh, I don't know who was first, but Vlad, go ahead and go first. Uh, no, Nichols was first. He actually, I think Scott was first in the chat. Yeah, Scott already spoke. I, th I think. Actually, well, let me ask you, Scott. Did you say what you wanted to say already? So my main point about this is I think that identity labeling is one use case and the general case of labeling events is actually interesting. And so my suggestion is, is that we not use a map, use a, a list of labels and you can optionally give a label a type and that type could be identity. So it's, it's a little more generic, it's a little more extendable and it applies to every use case that applies to uh, allowing a, a, an event to be labeled, not just identity. So if you allow this to be added to the top level, and then you also want to label events in the future, now you have two places where generic labels get applied to your event. And why, why try to get this one thing to be that specific case? That's, that was my point. Is this the comment related to that? No, there's a hidden comment somewhere. Yeah, I thought I saw something go by that you mentioned type. I can't seem to find it. So yeah, it's probably hidden now. Darn it. Okay. 
Thank you, Scott. Uh, Vlad, go ahead, go next. Yeah, so there were two topics topics discussed. First of all, Kathy, Kathy's labels and then uh, identity in AWS, which might be cognito identity or uh, access key, secret key, or whatever. Do these really have to be part of the envelope and not the payload? I brought up this issue in the GitHub issue for event versus payload too. There are limits on what we can put as payload, and I'm not sure that this is the best place to be for them. But then again, this would be heavily impacted by the security discussion, especially the signing and encryption part. But do they really have to be part of the envelope? I think so, the question for Kathy. I, I didn't quite get that. Uh, get your question. So you are. Uh, um, so the, the reason you know we put a, a a a bag here is because if we do not have this bag, um, there will be a lot of information. As we know, the fact is there are a lot of information. I mean, for different events, the identity could be different, right? For example, for uh, like I say, for a travel request event, the identity will be like the travel request ID for a long application event is with a long application ID, right? For a uh, motion uh, moving event, a uh, motion detection event, the, ID, the, the the label could be the house address. So they are, if we do not have a, a bag, there will be a, a, a proliferation of uh, a lot of, you know, uh, labels. So I think it's better we have a bag. Of course, for each specific event, I don't expect the identity labels to be a lot. Because for each specific event, the event producer will just put, uh, you know, whatever it's um, the identity and um, a few identity labels in in it. So I think, and also this is good for a consumer point of view. If the consumer does not need it, the consumer just can just pass this uh, back name and they ignore it. That's it. Um, do not need to go into uh, to pass every label, and also good for debugging purpose. So this is my my my. Um, this is why I think you know it's better to do this way, um, and also we define the type. You know because sometimes if we leave the type open, I think some transport probably will have problem. So that's why we define what is a content type. It will be a key value string with a key to be a string, and the value is also of string format uh, because it's a label. So. There's no point to be an integer for the value. Okay, so um, I apologize, I get this name wrong, but Tapini, I think you had your hand up. Did, did you want to say something? Yeah, it was sort of addressed by uh, Vlad, um, but it related to the fact that since since the um, relation between the payload and the envelope is being discussed already, this seems to go if this is accepted now as identification identification label, this seems to fall between a specifically a specific um, envelope variable that can always be used because they are they still have this free from definition between producers, and it seems that it should belong in the payload. But on the other hand, it's useful outside the payload when you want to drop events or something. And I think it should be clarified what the how this relates to that discussion, since it it's, doesn't seem that the purpose is very clear in that regard. Okay. Anybody else have a comment they'd like to bring up at this time? I would prefer it to be a part of the envelope rather than payload, purely from a, <laughs> purely from a troubleshooting standpoint. Yeah. Also yeah, from, yeah, but uh, that, that that applies to a lot of things. That say that applies to a lot of things, and this is a highly specific field name, identity labels. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. How it's not doesn't yeah. seem to be scoped very well. I think actually, I think if we make it too broad, if we say okay, we take the identity out, then there will be uh, then the producer can put just random information inside it. I hear other comments say, you know, yeah, the producer will put random information inside it. So that's why I think it's better to scope it to be identity. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's going to be a blow. 
unless it's bloated. And also, I want to suggest the point uh, that you know it's it's you know um, uh, it's good to put into the envelope because if we, if we put into the payload, right, uh, it's it's not easy to pass. Uh, so if it's encrypted, it's hard. So I don't think anybody has their hand up. So let me ask a question because it doesn't seem like it's very clear to me that everybody is on the same page relative to the purpose behind this new bag that Kathy's looking to add. Um, so for example, Kathy, I know you talk about it as being uh, for identity purposes, but to me, the word identity uh, isn't very precise, right? It, it can be lots of different things to different people. And then when I take a look at what Scott, and thank you, Scott, for the link, what Scott posed here uh, as an alternative, this seems like a very sort of generic uh, value pair kind of tagging mechanism, right? And it's not necessarily specific to identity per se. It's any label that you want to add to there. And I'm not saying which one is necessarily right or wrong, but it just seems to me we don't necessarily have agreement on what the purpose is behind what we're trying to solve here. Is it just we want to have a mechanism to be able to add additional properties for some purpose in general, or is it only for one very slice, thin slice of semantic meaning behind it? And if it's that very thin slice, I'm not sure the word identity means enough to me to understand very clearly what would go in that bag versus not. Because when I see it, it as currently defined, I would sit there and wonder why isn't event ID part of this identity bag? Because obviously event ID is the identification of the event is a unique identifier. So why is that not in there? And so those are the things that I'm trying to understand in my head is what so, is that so this is the problem we're trying to solve? Sorry, this is kind of what I was trying to say. The, it, it seems very counterintuitive how it is a place for identity information, but at the same time, the syntax and semantics for each label is open to interpretation. It, it seems like there's a, there's a random semantic applied to the lab, that field or that bag that isn't actually enforced or defined very well. Right, and that's part of a concern that I've had in the past, which is this feels like a generic bag for almost anything. Even though it's called identif identi identification or identity, it, it, it's gonna get used for just about anything because it's so loosely defined, which means we're adding yet another extensibility point and people aren't gonna be clear where to add things. Everything so, so else except the name identity label feels like it should be named routing labels or something similar where it's useful, the label is useful in routing and that's why it's in the envelope. So I think I'm hearing two different perspectives on this. One is saying, you know, this identity label is too restrictive. Uh, another is saying, you know, it's too broad. Uh, because mm -hmm. you say, you know, and I think Doug, your point is, you know, identity, you know, it's, uh, and you can put, people can put anything inside it. And, uh, but I see, but I hear, uh, uh, I heard another comment before saying, you know, identity, just you call it label because identity is too restrictive. Yes. So you're, so you're, you're, hearing, I, I, you're, you're hearing multiple things. Yes. They're, they're so, so, yeah, so, so I'm just thinking, you know, <laughs> so yeah, but I think the point is well, the scoping. Um, I, I think here I want to address one of your point with event ID because for you, you have event ID, right? You know, from an event source, it gave an event ID. It, that event ID has, you know, um, has nothing to do. So, so for, for the use case, like the travel request, you're going to have event ID. But then how we correlate this travel request event to the travel approval event? Those two IDs has nothing, you know, they do not have any you know uh, relationship so that's why we, we you know if the event producer can put a, a, like a, a, a tribal specific tribal request id or the tribal uh, uh, applications you know uh, employee id something like that that will help doing the correlation so that's why you know event id is not enough so this is a, so this is a place for the producer to put additional identification information on which you know think you know it, it, it has that Okay, so we're running a little low on time here, and I want to come up with a suggestion for how to move forward here. But let me talk to some, or let me get some people who have their hands up first. So Ryan, your hand was up first, I believe. Yeah, just just want to clarify. Did we solve that correlation PR or if 
it sounds very similar to that PR. I thought that PR was not even addressed yet. I think that PR morphed into this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I remember so correctly. Continuation of that discussion sounds like? Yes, I, I believe so. Very, sounds very familiar to me. Yes, I, I think that one morphed into this one eventually, yes. Okay, I see. Okay. And Thomas, I believe you're next. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to um, respond. There's a suggestion to change it to routing labels. Uh, I actually prefer Kathy's approach of labeling, of naming something based on what it is, not how you expect it to be used. Um, I think that it, it shouldn't look weird in the system if we find any use for a property. For example, I could use this for filtering as well. Okay, cool. And I know uh, since on your hand is up, but I believe Eric Erickson, your hand went up first. Yeah, I, I just wanted to call out I, something I'd put into the text is that I, op I offered uh, one property that was uh, follows from, which uh, perhaps captures a lot of uh, I th what I think this is after, which I believe is the causal relationship between events. Um, if, if the group would like, I can reopen that for discussion or rejection, whichever. Maybe you can add a pointer to that in, as part of this PR so we can look at it. As a, a point to it as a comment. Yeah, absolutely, we'll do. Excellent, thank you very much. And uh, Shen Shen? Uh, yeah, uh, it, this attribute seems to me is to specific, uh, to identify uh, some specific um, uh, event among some same time, uh, uh, from the same, uh, same event sources. So this is what I just want to clarify. Okay, thank you. And with that, I think we're, we're almost out of time. So Kathy, I'm trying to figure out the best way to move forward here. Um, I see two potential paths. One is to set up an offline meeting to have people who are interested in this topic discuss it. Um, but I know sometimes those meetings aren't as productive as they could be because of limited attendance. The other option is to just bring this up um, on next week's phone call to, to continue the discussion as long as you don't have anything else pressing to, to work on it. How would you like to proceed on this, Kathy? Because I feel like there's a lot of uh, uncertainty here about exactly what we're trying to do and, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get some more clarity first. So how would you like to proceed on this one? I think probably, you know, um, in the next meeting after we, uh, you know, present those use cases so people can also think about that. And then if this identity is not, uh, I, 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 okay, this is a name I can come up with. Uh, if people think this identity whatever name is not good, people can suggest another name. Uh, but I think for labels, I think it's a little bit too broad. That's my, my take. But if you know someone can come up with a better name, so, yeah, so I appreciate that. So let me ask you this, because you, you just now mentioned the use case stuff for correlation. Um, and we did talk about talking about the correlation requirements on next week's phone call. I'm assuming that that discussion is very much related to this one. Is, is that correct? Yes, that's very much related to this one. That's right, yeah. Okay, so maybe it would make sense then for us to have that discussion next week and see what, where people land relative to how they want to deal with correlation and then figure out the next steps on this PR since they're probably going to be uh, uh, discussed at the same time anyway. Okay, yeah. Okay. I think we can wait. Actually, um, in previous discussion, we mentioned called correlation labels. But then there's some people saying, you know, um, that's not good. So I do not know what's a better name. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how the conversation goes next week after we have the correlation discussion and see where maybe something will pop up and someone will have a brilliant idea on how to move forward on here. Um, obviously, this is a very touchy subject or a complicated one, I should say. Okay. With that, we have three minutes left and I'm not sure we have a whole lot of time to do anything meaty. Um, so let's, <clears throat> excuse me, let's just go back and finish the the uh, attendee list and then we'll, we'll call it a day with the whole two extra minutes. Um, let's see where to leave off. Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. William, are you still there? William? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Tapini, I got you. David Lyle, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Er Erica Diaz? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, got you. Um, Doug? Doug, I can never pronounce your last name. I apologize. I don't, I don't see him still on, so I missed him again this time. Okay, William, we already have. Luciano, I believe we heard you. Yeah, I'm through right. here. Yep. Is there anybody on the call that I did not add to the agenda? Hey, Doug, it's Dan Barker. Dan Barker, okay. 
Actually, I'm sorry, Doug Mc... Oh, I apologize. McGlory, are you there, Doug McGlory? Okay, I guess he's not able to speak. Okay, is there anybody else that I missed? He wrote in chat. I'm sorry, who's that? Uh, Doug McGlory wrote in chat that he's here. Oh, he did? Okay, excellent, thank you, I missed that. I can't see the chat. Uh, Doug, it's, uh, it's Yaron, I'm not sure you missed yep. I definitely got to your own. Thank you. I paused. I forgot to mention that. Thank you. All right. Anybody else on the call that I missed? You may not have gotten me. I'm Josh Richardson from Chegg. Richardson. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Excellent. Thank you guys very much. And we'll talk again next week.